With us creating so many digital photos and the size of those photos getting bigger and bigger and bigger, storing all that stuff can be an enormous task. You've got hard drives, computers, and then you have a NAS. But is a NAS any good for storing all of your photos? Gone are the days of nice small file sizes for our photos that we could easily store on a computer or hard drive. Cameras are getting better and giving us even more detail. But with more detail comes bigger file sizes. And with that, those big file sizes comes a big problem, where to store it all? Your computer is not an option and hard drives can fill up fast. So maybe it's time to check out a NAS for storing your digital storage. In this video, I'm gonna give you the lowdown of a NAS for storing your photos and check out the Lightroom quirk at the end that you need to know about. What is a NAS? A NAS is a network attached storage. Basically, it is usually a load of drives in a housing that you can then connect to through a network or Wi-Fi. It is a hard drive on steroids. A NAS can mean both the technology and the system involved. But is it any good for your photos? Obviously, there are some pros and cons involved. So let's have a look at them. The pros. High storage capacity. When it comes to capacity, a NAS device can store large amounts of data, making them a great option for large photo collections, especially if you are saving raw camera files, where one gigabyte of data is only 40 files. I have a mere 38 terabytes of space in mine to manage all of my clients' digital photos, and that can fill up fast with four terabyte Apple photo catalogs. NAS devices are easy to use, even for the non-techies. They are typically easy to set up and use. Believe me, if I can do it, then anyone can. And there are some great videos out there to show you how to set it up and how to set up backups, which we'll talk about in a minute. Centralized storage. A NAS allows you to store all of your photos in one central location and multiple people can access that data at one time. I mean, you don't need to be a mega company to need to allow multiple people to access at one time. Just think of all those family members that might need access to the data. Also, you don't need to have multiple drives and try and remember what data was on what drive and where you've stored it and how you stored it. It's all in one location. Finder and Explorer access. You can actually connect your NAS to your computer so it appears like any drive. So you don't need to go online to access your files. This is possible both with Mac Finder and Windows Explorer to make it appear as if it's just a drive. You just work away as normal as if you were using your computer hard drive and save files directly to your NAS. Remote access. Yes, you can access your photos anywhere with an internet connection, which for me, which is why I love my NAS, as I like a bit of remote working around the world. And being able to access all my data from say Australia is a must. I can just log in remotely and it's like I'm at home connected to my NAS. Although one tip from me is if you are going to use remote access, set up a login that doesn't have admin rights and use that remotely. So should someone get your login details, they can only access your data and can't access the admin area and really muck you up. Then use the admin login when you are at home on your secure network and want access to all the other lovely features. Security configurable. On your NAS, you can also add all sorts of security features beyond just encryption to protect your photos from unauthorized access. With hard drives, the most you can do is encrypt it, but then you are restricted as to where you can access that data, so only a Mac or a PC. Not the case with a NAS. Scalability. NASs are entirely scalable, which is sort of what they are all about. You can even start with empty slots and add more drives as you grow into the system but also scalable with users. It is already great that more than one person can access, but also you can add more users as you need them as well. The cons. Cost. I am not gonna lie, NAS devices can be expensive. More expensive than other types of storage devices like external hard drives. So you might need to stump up a decent amount to buy the disk station and the drives but you don't need to fill the station from the start. And in fact, I would recommend buying a larger station with more slots than you need so that you can grow into it. 
Single point of failure. Now, there is a potential for your NAS if you keep everything in one place for it to be your single point of failure. So if the drive fails, you could lose all of your data. However, if you've heard me bang on about backing up all of your stuff, you would never be keeping it all in one place. You would, of course, be backing up your data using the three to one backup approach with three copies of your data over two formats like cloud and your NAS with one off site. What you can do is you can actually get your NAS to automatically back up your data overnight to a cloud service like Backblaze. You can also get the NAS to mirror itself so that it mirrors the content in a different drive on the station because the likelihood of all of your drives failing at once in all of your slots is less likely. So if you're mirroring the data into a different location on the NAS, you are technically having two copies of your data and you have one in the cloud. So that's three, two, one network congestion or slow running. Now, this is one that usually turns people off from a NAS. It is the potential for network congestion. So if multiple users are accessing the NAS device at the same time, you could cause congestion through your Wi-Fi or through your network. Or some people can find working with a NAS slow, especially when using things like Lightroom or Photoshop. And if you don't have a decent Wi-Fi connection, that is probably the reason why. Personally, I have never had an issue with this as I have boosters all over the place and apparently some pretty decent Wi-Fi network. Power consumption. Unlike a hard drive, your NAS will need to be connected and powered up all the time so that they can consume a lot of power, which can add to your electricity bill because they are always doing stuff, whether it's copying stuff or backing up or just whirring away. So have a good think if you are okay with that before you invest. The Lightroom Oddity. Now, there is just one little thing to consider if you're using Lightroom. It's this little quirk that you can't actually store Lightroom catalogs on a NAS. Let me be clear, this is the catalog, not your files. So the solution is to save your catalog on an external hard drive or your computer. Then when you're adding the folders, point it towards your NAS. It is that simple. Don't listen to anyone that says you can't use Lightroom and a NAS. You can with a little bit of a workaround. So overall, NAS devices are a good option for storing large photo collections as they can store large amounts of data that you can easily access centrally and remotely. But you're going to need to stump up some cash to start with. And if you have poor Wi-Fi, you might get frustrated with its slowness. However, for me, I am all about the NAS storage for photos. It is just the best. Where do you store your large photo collections? I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Are you confused about which is the best cloud storage for your photos? Then check out my nifty tool, the best cloud storage for your photos, so you can find out which is the best cloud storage for your photos. That can be accessed through the link below. So click through and check it out. If you enjoyed this video, then like, share, subscribe, whatever. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.